Hello and welcome to A Block's final edition of Wildcat News. I'm Kelsey Connors. Let's kick it off with 2020 and the goals people are looking forward to. Definitely want to get into better shape once the new year starts. Um, probably to be more like physically active. I want to gain some weight. I'm going to lose 40 pounds. Um, to keep up my good grades. I'll try to get my license this year. Many people's favorite memories were vacationing in 2019, but others enjoyed being around friends over the summer. I'm um, definitely traveling, going to Bermuda. Family vacation. Going to Hawaii. Summer was really fun. Hanging out with my friends. Football. Playing football with the boys. 2019 wasn't the year people expected and they didn't enjoy it. I think 2019 was not a good year. <laughs> Nothing, it was not. I didn't like this year. In the new year, students and staff have many things to look forward to. A few students are looking forward to prom. Uh, definitely prom. Um, I'm really looking forward to prom. Uh, my triplets graduate in high school. In 2020, there's a wide variety of things students would like to change in the school to make it better. We should have a dunks in the school. Probably the Chromebooks. Kids think I need a raise. Do you think I need a raise? Yeah, that's it. Like, you know, some less homework, maybe recess. To the future, students are hoping 2020 will be their year. Others are more skeptical to what may come. Um, I hope 2020 is my year. I mean, I think every year is my year. So, I think, yeah, 2020 will again be my year. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I have no idea. We'll see. With Winter Hair, one of our most active clubs is underway. Emma Marchetti has more about the ski club. Thanks, Kelsey. I'm looking forward to all that 2020 has to offer. And with the new year comes another ski season, now in its 10th year. There's a record number of 73 students who have signed up, and Mr. Cray says there's a lot to look forward to. So Ski Club here at West Bridgewater uh, started about 9, 10 years ago. I was like, hey, can we start a ski club where students join? And that is the club for six weeks, and we go to Wachusett uh, during the week. And she was like, yeah, go for it. Um, honestly, it was one morning or afternoon, Mr. Cray and I kind of were talking in the hallway and we realized he snowboarded and I skied and he threw the idea out there of just starting up a ski club and it's, you know, the rest is history. The chaperones tell us if or how their time on the slopes differs from the students. Not a lot. You know, the, the kids actually end up trying to ski with us, the chaperones, a lot of times. Um, we try to get in as many runs as we possibly can, so it really doesn't differ that much. Students walk us through what happens from when they get off the bus to actually skiing down the mountain. When we first get off the bus, we go in the lodge and get our stuff on, and then we get in line right away so we can have as many runs as possible. Some of the experienced skiers have advice for those who are new to ski club. Um, ski with people with the same skill level as you. Don't ski with people that are, like, always go on black diamonds. If you're like not that good, very new, go with people that are also new and learn off of their mistakes. Take lessons. <laughs> Don't just think that your friends are being nice and bringing you to the top of the mountain. Take lessons, figure out what you're doing first, and go slow. Figure it out. Students are super excited for the upcoming ski season. I'm nervous because I don't have any experience, but I'm excited that I get to try something new with my friends. Um, probably just like going down, going down the slopes with my friends, and the bus rides up are really fun too. So. Ski Club has overall furthered the experience of skiers and has introduced many to trying something new that they can improve on. Now on to Kate Remy, talking about how students and faculty feel about middle schoolers. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. At West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School, grades 7 through 12 are mixed into the same building. This can have many positive effects, however, it can have its downs. The faculty oversees all the grades and how they coexist. Let's see what they had to say. Like anything, it has pros and cons to it. I think um, one of the pros for the middle schoolers is that they get to see what high school life is like with having the high schoolers upstairs. They get to get some familiarity with the teachers that they'll have in the future, and the high schoolers can still remember some of their fond middle school memories, maybe. High school students provide um, a wonderful example for maturity, for what it means to be an older student, how to conduct yourselves, to be role models. And if middle schoolers are seeing um, less than favorable representations of what it means to be an older student, then it's going to breed a certain culture. Um, yes, I think there are some benefits um, that include middle schoolers having someone to set an example for. I think giving high schoolers the ability to um, set an example and giving them that opportunity to, uh, in a way, give back to their school community. 
High schoolers being the older kids at the school have mixed views about being in the same building as middle schoolers. Some see it as a leadership opportunity, but others have different views. I don't really care. They're pretty separated from us, so it doesn't make much difference. I feel like the middle schoolers do tend to have a lot of drama and a lot of chaos going on. They can learn for, from us, like Wildcat leaders and um, the, girls talk, the girls talk group that Mrs. McMurray runs. Most middle schoolers look up to the high schoolers as role models, however it can be a little intimidating at first. I do because you get the experience of being with high schoolers in the same building so they can help you when you transition. If I have a question and I can find one of them, it's helpful because I can just ask them. Like if you need, like, need help or something or you need to like find a room, they can help you because like they've been here a while. Personally, I can get a little intimidated, but most of the high schoolers I've met are really nice. Although being a middle senior high school can have its ups and downs, overall it has a positive effect on the student body. It's pretty chilly here in WB. Let's hand it over to Jacqueline and hear about snow days. Thanks, Kate. Snow days are important during the school year. Now let's see how the school feels about them. Mrs. Page informs us about how snow days work. Um, there's really no limit to snow days. Um, it depends on the weather. I mean, safety is always a concern, so I don't think we'd ever say we can only have three more. Um, hopefully, we don't, um, but it really just depends on safety and conditions of kids coming to school. Our vice principal tells us the consequences of having too many snow days. Um, in all the years that I've been here, we haven't, so hopefully you know cross your fingers it'll be the same this year but I know if it gets to a point where we can only go till the end of June you can't go into July uh, and we have to have the 180 days um, that would have to start looking at possibly you know vacation days you know uh, taking some of February and April but we have n since I've been here we have never had to do that some students let us know what they like to do for fun on snow days I like to go to my friend's house if the roads are clear enough and I like to watch movies I like to go outside and play in the snow, maybe do a little sledding. I usually hang out with my friends or I go outside and have snowball fights. Uh, on snow, day, snow days, I go plowing with my father and work. Many students enjoy snow days throughout the school year. Uh, yeah, I do because I get to relax and I don't have to go to school. Yeah, because we can get a break from school and the snow is really pretty. <laughs> uh, I do like snow days. It like, takes time off of school and you get a day off. When they come, I do like them, but never too many because I'm trying to get out of school in the summer. I like snow days sometimes because they're just a little break from school. You can catch up. Ryan prefers to have less snow days. I'd rather have less snow days and more summer because that's just more free time when there's better weather. Students tell us their opinions on snow days. Sometimes it's nice, but then when it comes to June, it seems like a waste. I don't think they're a waste. It's nice to have a day off every once in a while. Now that you have some ideas of what to do on snow days, hopefully it won't be a waste of a day for you. Now over to Lindsay for some information on new drivers. As many new students begin to get their license, the concern for new inexperienced drivers driving in the harsh winter weather grows. We spoke to some of our new drivers. Let's see what they have to say. Driving in the snow can be difficult for new drivers. Here's what they had to say about it. Uh, yeah, I've driven in the snow a few times. It's, uh, you slide a lot. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's kind of fun. Uh, I have. It's, it's tough. Like, you get stuck really easily, and like, you slip and slide, but it is what it is. Just go slow and be cautious of other people on the road. With all the new student drivers, the school parking lot can be a bit crazy. It's really busy because um, all, all the new students coming in with their license, like the juniors and some sophomores, and like all the parents rushing to get their kids into school on time, and like the traffic, people walking in and out of school, it's just busy. Uh, it can be kind of hectic, you just take your time and eventually you'll get out. Living in the snow can be very dangerous. We see if students and teachers take it slow. Yeah, I definitely take it slow, but I, I don't go like 20 miles an hour. I still go like the limit. I would say not only to respect snow, but also rain. Nobody respects rain. Very dangerous. Slow down when there is inclement weather. Got some advice from experienced drivers for our student drivers. If I had a safe driving tip in the winter, I would give them, if there's ice on the road, even if you can't see it, just take it slow because black ice is very, very dangerous. So just like take it slow around corners. Even if you can't see anything, just drive slow. Well, the most important thing is that 
is when you see posted speed limits through the most of the year, say 30 or 40, you have to really reduce those speed limits when there's any sort of um, snow or ice on the road. So uh, a 30 mile an hour speed limit that might be safe in, in August is probably going to be down to like 15 or 20 in, uh, in the winter. So, you, you know, you have to you follow the rules of the road as always, but you always have to leave extra space and operate a little bit slower when there's ice or snow on the road. To all the new student drivers, make sure to be careful when driving in these weather conditions. With this season of winter in full blast, student drivers are not the only concern. Let's hand it over to Darlene and learn more about the flu. Thanks, Lindsay. It's that time of year again. You guessed it, flu season. So it's usually in the fall and winter. Um, so we start seeing cases of the flu around like October, November. It really starts to ramp up and the peak is usually December and January. People with the flu often share similar experiences. So the symptoms of the flu are fever, headache, chills, sore throat, cough, um, and you just feel lousy, muscle aches. I haven't had the flu, but my brother had. He was in bed all day and he couldn't really get up. He was, his body temperature really high and he didn't feel like doing anything but laying in bed. Throwing up, a lot of laying in bed, some hot soup in there. It makes for a terrible evening. There are many different ways to prevent the flu. I do not encourage students to share things like chapstick, I see that happening all the time, or take a sip out of their friend's water bottles. Not only are they spreading the flu, but a million other different bugs and germs that are on them. So kind of making sure that what you keep is to your own and, um, and waiting for the, the rough time of year to pass. Is um, I try to encourage my students to use hand sanitizer that I have. Um, making sure that you wash your hands often, keeping your hands away from your face, your eyes, nose, and your mouth, um, making sure to cover your cough if you are coughing or sneezing so that you're not spreading it to anyone else. Uh, but most importantly, I think just making sure that you're supporting your body's own um, immune response. Um, well, one of the best ways to do that is to get a flu shot, which you should do, although sometimes it's not as effective, but I think generally hand washing, um, sneezing into your arm, coughing into your arm, um, and just generally trying to prevent any spread of germs um, is a good way to do that. And kind of keeping a clean environment around you is, is key, and uh, hand washing is key, and um, really kind of distancing yourself um, from people who might carry the infection. So, you know, crowded environments and other things like that. If you know that you're not feeling so hot, don't go to a party, you know, and, and spread all your germs all over the place. Hopefully use these tips to prevent the flu and stay healthy all year long. You wouldn't want to miss the Super Bowl because you had the flu. Now let's head over to Nico and hear all about the playoffs. Thank you, Darlene. Now we're going to talk to some football fans at the West Ridgewater High School and see what they think of the NFL playoffs. Mr. Cray seems like he has been a 49ers fan his whole life. The team I call my favorite is the San Francisco 49ers, and that's because growing up in the uh, 90s, late 80s into the 90s, my dad wasn't a Patriots fan. He was a Giants fan. So there was no Patriots allegiance in the household. So I was kind of free to pick whoever. And the 49ers were awesome at the time with Joe Montana and Jerry Rice and Roger Craig. So that's the team I caught on to. Mr. Craig believes that the Ravens of 49ers will be in the Super Bowl. Now, I feel pretty good about the 49ers Ravens in the Super Bowl. Um, after watching the game uh, two weeks ago, that made me realize both teams are at a level of competition that is above just about every other team in the uh in the nfl mr cray believes that the score will be 42 to 35. so if ravens 49ers end up in the super bowl that's a t it's probably going to be a high scoring affair because no one could stop lamar jackson so the niners are going to have to keep up you're talking like a similar score to what we just saw last week at the time of this taping uh where it's probably like a 42 35 kind of thing mr sanford is a patriots fan my favorite NFL team is still going to be the home team, the Patriots, just because, uh, you know, I grew up around here. I'm not, like, a crazy fan. Um, I'm not a Fairweather fan either. You know, when they win, it's great. When they lose, I'm not crying myself to sleep at night or anything. Mr. Sanfa agrees with Mr. Cray and believes that the, it will be the Ravens and 49ers at the Super Bowl. Um, it's tough. I think just right now, I think off the top of my head, I think it's going to be there's going to be a rematch between the Niners and the Ravens. Mr. Stanfo will think the score will be 27 to 24 49ers. Very tough. Both high-scoring teams. I'll say uh, let's say 27 24 Niners. Mr. Walsh believes that it will be the Patriots and the Seahawks again. I think that I guess I'll go with the Patriots for the AFC. I'm a little concerned about the Ravens, but uh, maybe we'll pull it together. NFC. I will go with the Seahawks. 
Now that most people are right that the Patriots would not be in the Super Bowl, and by the looks of it, they were even more right when they said it was going to be the Ravens and the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Thank you for watching our last episode of your A Block class. A Block out. Mm -hmm.